Hello everyone, George here, and we're back again with this Five Nights at Freddy's project. It's been a while since I last did anything with it, and I've had the horrible idea of completely messing the whole thing up. The first way I'm going to do that is by trying to figure out how to get the high-definition rendering pipeline to work inside of this platform. And, uh, it doesn't go so well. I, uh, I don't know what it is, but apparently I can't see the small install button at the lower right-hand corner of my screen as I'm trying to install it. So I go ahead and create a new project just with the HDRP pipeline in place to make sure that it it does actually work. Never tried it before. So, you know, here I can see a scene has been made. I can get an idea of what's in it that makes it actually work. Now we can go back to my scene and we can give it a shot and see how we're going to make it happen. So once again, going over to the package manager, high definition RP pipeline, I'm kind of moving back and forth because for some reason I can't see the small install button at the lower right hand corner of the screen. I think it's because I'm working on a 4K screen and everything just is smaller. So the, the button is so far away from what I'm reading. I just don't even, take a minute to look at it. Anyway, we go ahead, install that, and um, things are okay to begin with. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, what do I need to do to make this actually work? I, I've done no research on it whatsoever. This is me just trying to get it to work as is. And then I go into Substance Painter. I'm like, okay, well, I'm probably going to need the right materials for this to work anyway. So why don't we go ahead, bring in an old asset and try to re-export it out with this new pipeline um, because Substance Painter has the Unity HDRP pipeline already built into one of its configurations for exporting. So I go ahead, export that out. I then bring everything in and then I start trying to use the different features that Unity provides you to convert your project over into one that's HDRP compatible. And that pretty much breaks everything. Now I'm going back in, I'm looking at the concrete. I'm trying to figure out I'm just trying to get something together that actually works. Here I'm re-exporting those assets out and going to bring them back into Unity under the HDRP pipeline, hoping that maybe somehow it will work. And at first I'm like, what the hell is a mask map? And I realized after looking it up, oh, okay, that makes sense. You've taken all the different maps that were single channel beforehand and you condensed them all into one single texture file. That makes a lot of sense. I actually like that. Good for you, Unity. But now we're moving on to the next phase of things and uh, as you notice, my screen is completely black. I delete all my lights. I delete all light baking. I uh, reinitialize things. I go through and try to do everything that I can think of to get my scene to actually be visible again. The only objects that you can see are ones that are not using the HDRP shader. Those are ones using the, uh, accidentally I put the Autodesk uh, shader on them instead, which I still don't know anything about. I tried looking that up a few weeks ago and then there still doesn't seem to be any information online about why you would want to use the Autodesk shader as, as opposed to something else. But anyway, now I go through and I try to convert it. I go online, do some basic searching. I see nothing that helps me out, nothing that describes this problem where everything is black. I'm going to go back in, try to re-import the assets, re-import the different methods. You'll notice I get a ton of warnings all over the place. I'm not sure why. I even try to dive into the code. Here I'm using under file the different methods to try to convert your scene over to one that will actually work with Unity and none of them actually do much of anything for me in this case, which kind of stinks. So now I'm going back in and once again, more searching, trying to get those keywords just right to see if someone else has my problem. Here we're looking up the uh, other pipeline, which has nothing to do with this either. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm just kind of frustrated at this point. I keep trying every feature function that I can find that, that is meant to convert from HDRP from the standard uh, shader to the HDRP one. I can't find anything that describes the problem I'm having. So guess what we do? We create a new project. This one is going to be called a week at Arthur's because that's my second son's name. So the first attempt was my, my first son's name. This is my second son's name. So there we go. So now we're at a week at Arthur's and uh, I'm once again, I'm loading up the, uh, well, it came with this scene. So I'm going through and I'm deleting all the assets out that I don't need. I just want to keep the bare bones scene by itself. And uh, you may have just noticed that this is where I also do another big change. I'm exporting everything out of Maya right now into an FBX format and I'm inside of Blender. Yes, it is official. George has started making the change from Autodesk to Blender. Um, why? At work, it's what I'm re requiring everyone in my lab to use because it's easy, it's accessible, it's free. Uh, so why the heck not? So yeah, now you're going to see me pretty much struggle for the next, I don't know, five minutes trying to get Blender to do what I want it to do. And this is moving between X-ray mode and not X-ray mode and pivoting objects and, and figuring out how to make stuff work. But what I realize is based on the last project I made, and maybe you are or are not watching those videos, but I also did a Warsaw project that's still ongoing, but I created a proof of concept of the entire thing, a full walkthrough. And I did it in a very different way than I would have been approaching this, this FNAF game. And I decided that I'm going to 
approached the FNAF game in the same way because it was so successful being able to build everything inside of Unity as opposed to using it in Blender or Maya or whatever problem, uh, program you happen to use. So now I'm cutting up the ceiling. I'm going to cut it into four distinct blocks, 4 by 4 3 by 3 2 by 2 and a 1 by one Those th uh, four blocks should allow me to create anything inside of Unity just by positioning these however I want to. So now I am once again struggling with the uh, G uh, key, the move tool. Um, I'm trying to use hotkeys as much as possible because I feel like that's the only way I'm going to get better at Blender uh, than I am at Maya. And Blender, I will say, has an amazing set of hotkeys. It's got a lot of stuff going on to where if I get good enough, I think I can do something interesting with it. So here I've screwed a few things up. Now, of course, we're constraining on an axis by pressing either the, the what is it, the Z key in that case because it's the vertical axis. That's another thing that's that's confusing me is, is I'm used to Y being up and now Z is up. Now I'm going through renaming everything in my collection. We've got a ceiling one, two, three, and four. I'm going to just work on the four by four for right now. And this is where I take a little bit of time and I'm kind of frustrated because I'm, I'm not, I don't know the right answer. First, I'm, I'm messing with the UVs. And you'll notice if I try to grab them, I'm also selecting the other UVs. And this has to do with the fact that I am, uh, I've got this weird little mode on in the upper left-hand corner that makes it so that if I select a vertex, it's also going to grab all shared UVs, which you can turn off if you turn that mode off, and then there's three icons right next to it that allow you to change um, what you're actually messing with. Or actually one icon, not three. Now, once again, new to Blender, so I'm constantly trying to figure out how the heck do I get this thing to snap to the grid? Because it doesn't seem to be snapping in increments that I want. So, playing around with the preferences, playing around with the settings, getting an idea of what's going on. Then I decide, you know what, I'm going to snap to the corners of my pixels. So I grab everything and just really quick do a snap on each one. And that causes them to all be realigned with the grid in a better way than what was before. Before, the UVs might have been sampling across multiple pixels. Now, instead, we're sampling across one pixel. And I don't have to worry about that pixel having uh, contrary information next to it. Uh, so here, I am making two sets of the UVs. There's a UV set that is going to be for the texture, and then there's one for the light mapping. I don't know if Unity accepts this yet, but in my head, I think it should. The first UV set is all for texturing, which will, which allows me to reuse assets or, or texels. The second part is going to be for the light mapping, and I hope I can enable that. Now we export this thing out, bring it over to Substance Painter, and I decided to start playing around with understanding what the normal map and height map are really doing. Uh, every time I read stuff, it's you know it, it tells you, is it DirectX or is it OpenGL? And as someone who's programmed in both of those languages, I do know there's a difference. However, when I bring these height maps into Unity, I don't really see it. I don't see a, like an inversion of the Y axis or something. It looks just fine. So here I'm going through and I'm exporting stuff out and uh, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with these two different maps. So I'm gonna create one that's OpenGL based and one that's DirectX based, bring them both in. And you can see right there with that image that just popped up, both those normal maps do look different. One is darker than the other, meaning that something's been inverted as far as I'm concerned. But we're gonna bring them both in and see if anything changes. And I gotta tell you off the top of my head, just looking at this, I don't see a lot of difference between the two normal maps, so I'm not exactly sure what to do. Before I get to that, though, I'm having horrible problems with exporting assets out and bringing them in over here. And that's because I did not apply any of the transformation, rotations, or scales in my scene to my objects. So when I do export them out, it's got all kinds of weird rotations on top of everything else that's going on. So now we're going to go back to my object. I'm mainly working with the 4x4. I also went and subdivided that 4x4 into, into four individual locations. That is, I made uh, three cuts through the center, so it's four by four, literally. This way, when I use the tessellation stuff and displacement stuff, it looks like it works better in that respect. But once again, I have not done anything inside the Unity shader yet, so this could all be for nothing, and it probably is. Now I'm going to go and affect the pivot, make sure that the bottom of the floor or the ceiling is in line with that, uh, that uh, pivot point right there, so that when I bring them in, I've got a nice little offset this way, when I align objects together, everything looks right. And here, I'm just comparing things, and I'm not really noticing much difference between the two different materials. So I say, all right, if I can't see it with something like that, why don't we just go blatant and grab a normal map and just paint on the surface of this? But then I'm like, you know what, even here, I'm not quite sure what's going to be up and down. So why don't I paint a height map where I know the white is going to be high level and the blacks are going to be the lower, the lower level, and then gray is going to be right in the middle? So we go ahead, bring those two in here. I embellish that, bring it up in scale. And then now I am playing around with the UVs because I don't quite like how they're laid out. So I'm re-rotating them back and forth. 
And a lot of the reason this is taking so long is once again, I'm getting used to Blender. I'm getting used to the hotkeys, I'm getting used to the controls. I'm getting used to the fact that I have to press the three key to open up faces and then hit the L key in UV mode to grab all of them at the same time, which is very contrary to Maya where I have, I can select entire UV segments that are connected together without doing anything. So it's taking a little bit of time. Going back over here, we got the HDRP slash lit shader going on. I'm checking out different preferences. I got the base, the mask, and the normal map. It seems like that's all I need. I'm looking to see if there's any kind of displacement stuff that I can do, but I'm not noticing any differences. I'm going to go ahead and export one out as DirectX, which is what you just saw. Now I'm going to export another one out as OpenGL, which is what you're about to see. And I'm going to put them next to each other. I'm just going to compare them and see if there's really much of a difference. They're not quite exactly the same, but uh, they're very close. And I'm looking at the angles that the sun is hitting these objects and, and getting a sense of, okay, what's going on here? Uh, they're both darkened on the same side. They both have the same issues. They both seem to be impacting the uh, light in the same ways. What's the difference between the DirectX and the OpenGL? And I know you're going to tell me, George, it's because the Y axis is inverted, duh. But what I'm saying is I'm not seeing that. I don't know what Unity does behind the scenes. Does it automatically convert it? Does it know I'm using DirectX versus OpenGL? Does it take it in, automatically know which one is averaged and figure it out? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. That's enough for this video. I've messed everything up. I have uh, converted over to a new pipeline. Everything's back to square one practically. And uh, yeah, and I'm using Blender, which means I'm going to be twice, if not four times as slow. This is going to be a hell of a ride. So let's see what happens in the future. All right. So long, everyone. Bye.